for being here. Uh, and we're thanking the weather for cooperating. We're thanking Brian Park for having us again since 2015. We're back again. Thank you, Brian Park. My name is Alvin Clancy. I am the producing artistic director of the drilling company. And we are so, so grateful to Brian Park for continuing this terrific relationship after everything everybody's been through. To see all you folks here and gathered for some live theater is tremendous! Woo! So we're welcoming all of you not only to seeing some live outdoor Shakespeare for the first time in New York City, but this is some of the first theater at all in New York. So thank you all. Give yourselves a hand. I'm taking it, listen, I'm taking a video of the whole show on my YouTube. Uh, lady, I want to let you folks know that, sound that uh, uh, in observation of some of our our times, oh, yeah. uh, we're not handing out programs like we normally would because that's, you know, more. We're going to put our program at drillingcompany.org. That's drillingcompany.org. It's easy to find. So after the show, you want to go check out, oh, who was that actor or something like that, just go to our website at drillingcompany.org. If you happen to need to use a restroom here in Bryant Park, uh, they have a lovely bunch right over here in the corner. If you're not familiar, they're right over there. And without further ado, I'm going to let the actors get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the Two Noble Kinsmen. that is distressed as bind me to her. What's your request? Deliver you for Come. We are three queens whose sovereigns fell before the wrath of Creon, who endured the beaks of ravens, talons of the kites, and pecks of crows in the foul fields of Thebes. He will not suffer us to burn their bones, to earn their ashes, nor to take the fence of mortal loathsomeness from the blessed eye of holy Phoebus, but infects the winds with the stench of our slain lords. O oh, pity do, thou purger of the earth, draw thy field sword that does good turns to the world. Give us the bones of our dead kings that we may chapel them. I was transported with your speech and suffered your knees to wrung themselves. I have heard the fortunes of your dead lords, which gives me such lamenting as wakes my vengeance and revenge for them. Oh, I hope some god, some god, Put his mercy in your manhood, where to he'll infuse power and press you forth our undertaker. No more needs, none, widow, and pray for me, your soldier. Troubled I am. Honor the Bolita, most dreaded Amazonian, soldieress, bid him that we whom flames of war doth scorch under the shadow of his sword may cool us. Require him that he advance it on our heads. Tell him if he in that blood-sized field lay swollen, showing the sun his teeth, grinning at the moon, what you would do. Poor lady, say no more. My lord is taken heart deep with your distress. Let him consider. I'll speak anon. Oh, my petition was set down in ice which by hot grief uncandied melts into drops. So sorrow wanting form is pressed with deeper matter. Pray stand up. 
Your grief is written in your cheek. Oh, well, you cannot read it there. There, through my tears, like wrinkled pebbles in a glossy stream, you may behold them. Pardon me. Extremity that sharpens sundry wits makes me a fool. Pray you say nothing. Pray you. Who cannot feel nor see the rain being in it knows neither wet nor dry. Your sorrow beats so ardently against my heart that it shall make a counter-reflect against my brothers and warm it to some pity, though it were made of stone. Pray, have good comfort. Forward to the temple and leave not out a jot of the sacred ceremony. Oh, this celebration will longer last and be costlier than your suppliant's war. Our lords lie blistering for the visitating sun and were good kings when living. It is true, and I will give you comfort to give your dead lords graves. The which to do must make some work with Creon. And that work presents itself to the doing. Now you may take him, drunk with his victory. And his army full of bread and sloth. This is a service where to I am going, greater than any war. It more imports me than all the actions that I have foregone or futurely can cope. We have come unseasonably. But how can grief call forth, as unkind judgment can? Fit is time for best solicitation. Let us all take hands. Let us be widows to our woes. Delay commends us to a famishing hope. Farewell. Though much unlike you should be so transported, as much sorry I should be such a suitor. Yet I think, did I not, by the abstaining of my joy, which breeds a deeper longing, cure that surfeit that craves a present medicine, I should pluck all lady scandal on me. Therefore, sir, as I here make trial of my prayers, either presuming them to have some force or, or sentencing, for I their vigour dumb. Prorogue this business we are going about, and hang your shield afore your heart about that neck which is my fee and which I freely lend to do these poor queens service. Oh, help now. Our cause cries for your knee. Most noble brother, if you grant not my sister her petition in that force, and that same celerity and nature in which she makes it, from henceforth I'll not dare ask you anything, nor be so hardy ever to take a husband. Pray you, stand up. I am entreating with myself to do that which you kneel to have me. Pirithus, lead on the bride, get you and pray the gods for success. Or make not anything of the pretended celebrations. Since our theme is haste, I stamp this kiss upon thy gentle hand. Sweet, keep this as my token. Set you forward, for I will see you gone. Farewell, beauteous sister. Perithus, keep the feast full. Bait not now, aunt. Sir, I'll follow you at foot. The feast solemnity will want till you return. Cousin, I charge you, budge not from Athens. Once more, farewell all. Come. Thus dost thou now make good the tongue of the world. And earnst a deity equal with Mars. Think not above him, for thou being but mortal makes affection spent to godlike honors. As we are men, thus should we do. Being sensually subdued, we lose our human title. Good cheer, ladies. Now turn we towards a comfort. Dear Palamon, dearer in love than blood and our prime cousin, let us leave the city Thebes and the temptings in it before we further sully our gloss of youth. Now your advice is cried up with example. What strange ruins since first we went to school may we perceive walking in Thebes? Scars and bare weeds the gain of the martial list, who did propound to his bold ends honor and golden ingots, which, though he won, he had not, and now flirted by peace for whom he fought. Who then shall offer to Mars so scorned altar? Are you not out? 
Meet you no ruin but the soldier in the cranks and turns of thieves? You did begin as if you met decays of many kinds. Perceive you none that do arouse your pity but the unconsidered soldier? Yes, I pity decays where'er I find them, but such most that sweating in an honorable toil are paid with ice to cool. Tis not this I did begin to speak of. I spake of thieves. How dangerous if we will keep our honors. It is for our residing, where every seeming good's a certain evil. Here, we're to be strangers, and such things to be mere monsters. Tis in our power to be masters of our manners. What need I affect another's gate, or, or to be fond upon another's way of speech, when by mine own I may be reasonably conceived? Either I am the four horse in the team, or I am none. Our uncle Creon. He! A most unbounded tyrant whose successes make heaven unfeared and villainy assured. One that fears not to do harm, good dares not. Let the blood of mine that sib to him be sucked from me with leeches. Let's leave his court, that we may nothing share of his lewd infamy. For our milk will relish of the pasture, and we must be vile or disobedient. Nothing truer. I think the echoes of his shames have deft the ears of heavenly justice. Ah, Valerius! The king called for you, yet be late and footed till his great wrath be off him. Small winds shake him, but what's the matter? Theseus has set deadly defiance on him, and pronounced ruin to Thebes, who is at hand to see the promise of his wrath. Let him approach. He brings not a jot of terror to us. Yet what man thirds his own worth, when that his actions dragged with mind assured his that he goes about? Leave that unreasoned. Our services stand now for thieves, not Creon. Is it said this war is afoot, or it shall be on fail of some condition? Tis in motion. The intelligence of state changed the instant we did the fire. Now let's to the king, who, were he a quarter carrier of that honor which his enemy come in, the blood we venture should be as for our health, which were not spent, rather laid out for purchase. Let the event, that never erring arbitrator, tell us when we know all ourselves. And let us follow the becking of our chance. Nazdrovia. Nazdrovia. <laughs> no further. Sir, farewell. Repeat our wishes. I wish him excess and overflow of power and might be to dual in dealing fortune. My precious maid, those best affections that the heavens infuse in their best tempered pieces. Keep them enthroned in your dear heart. Thanks, sir. Remember me to our all-royal brother. Our hearts are in his army, in his tent, in his bosom. We have been soldiers, and we cannot weep when our friends don their helms. Peace be to you, as I pursue this war, which will seem to be beyond further requiring. <laughs> See how his longing follows his friend? Have you observed him since our great lord departed? With much labor, and I did love him for it. They too have cabined in many as dangerous as poor a corner, peril and want contending. They're not of love, tied, weaved, entangled, and so true, so long, with a finger of so deep a cunning, may be outworn, never undone. I think Theseus cannot be umpire to himself, cleaving his conscience into twain and doing each side like justice, which he loves best. <laughs> Doubtless. I was acquainted once with a time where I enjoyed a playfellow. You were at wars when she the grave enriched. Made too proud the bed, took leave of the moon, which then looked pale at parting when our count was each eleven. Twas Flavina. Yes. You talk of Pirithus and Theseus' love, and their needs the one of the other may be said to water their intertangled roots of love. But I and she, oh, I sigh and spoke of were things innocent, loved for we did, and like the elements that know not what nor why, yet do issue rare occurrences, our souls did so to one another. What she liked was then of me approved, what not Condemned, no more arraignment, the flower that she would pluck and place between her breasts, then but beginning to swell about the blossom. Oh, I would long till I had such another, and commit it to the like innocent cradle, where phoenix-like they died in perfume. On my head, no toy but was her pattern. 
her affections pretty, though happily her careless wear, I followed for my most serious decking. Had mine ear found some new air, or, or had adventure hummed from musical coinage why it was a note whereon her spirit would sojourn, whether dwell on and sing it in her slumbers, this rehearsal has this end, that the love between maid and maid may be more than in sex individual. <laughs> you are out of breath. And this high-speeded pace is but to say that you shall never, like the maid Flavina, love any that is called man? I am sure I shall not. <laughs> but alack, weak sister, I shall no more believe thee in this point than I shall trust a sickly appetite that loathes even as it longs. But sure, my sister, if I were right for your persuasion, you have said enough to shake me from the arm of Theseus whose fortunes I now win and kneel with great assurance that we, more than his Pyrrhus, possess the high throne in his heart. I am not against your faith, yet I will continue mine. One of those. Good morning. Men of great quality, as judged by their appointments. Oh, by the helm of Mars, I saw them in the war. Like to a pair of lions smeared with prey, make lanes through tr troops aghast. I fixed my note constantly on them, for they were a mark were the gods' view. What prisoner was that told me when I inquired their names? We'll live. Their names are Arsite and Palamon. Oh, that's right, those, those. They're not dead, nor in a state of life. Had they been taken when their last hurts were given, it's possible they may have recovered. Yet they live and have the names of men. They're like men, use them. All our surgeons convent in their behoof. Their lives concern us much more than Thebes is worth. Leading to the city, where having bound things scattered we will post to Athens for our army. May I cast to you, uh, not much. Uh, alas, this prison that I keep, uh, though it be for great ones, they seldom come. Before one salmon, you must take a number of minnows. Eh? <laughs> I am given out to be much better wine than it can appear to me. Truth, uh, 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 truth is a true speaker, but. Um, I wish I really were as well, uh, well off as I am delivered to be. No matter what I have, I will assure upon my daughter at the day of my death. Sir, I demand no more than your honor for, and I will state your daughter in what I have promised. Well, we will talk more of this when the solemnity is passed. Eh? Uh, but, have you a full promise of her. When death shall be seen, I tender my consent. I have. <gasps> Here she comes. <laughs> uh, your friend and I have chance to name you here on the old business, huh? <laughs> but no more of that now, huh? Uh, we will, after all this court hurry is over, we will have an end on it, okay? Uh, but, in the meantime, look you tenderly to the two prisoners. <laughs> I can tell you they are princes. <gasps> Tis pity they're in prison, and twere pity they should be out. I do think they have the patience to make any adversity ashamed. The prison itself is proud of them. They are famed to be a pair of absolute men. Oh, tis true, for they are noble sufferers, that with such nobility and force of freedom Oh, do they so? It seems to me they have no more sense of their captivity than I of ruling Athens. I never saw them. Oh, the Duke himself came privately in the night and saw the day. The reason for it I know not, but oh, look, oh. look, yonder they are. See, that, 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 that's our sight. It looks out. No, eh? no, sir, no. That's Parliament. <laughs> Our sight is the lower of the twain, you may perceive a part of him. Oh, no, no, go to, leave off your pointing. Eh, they would not make us their object. Out, go, out of their sight. Tis a holiday to look on them. Lord, the difference of men! How do 
do, you noble cousin? How do you, sir? Why, strong enough to laugh at misery and bear the chance of war. Yeah, we are prisoners, I fear, forever, cousin. I believe it. Where's Thebes now? Where's our noble country? Where are our friends and kindreds? Oh, never shall we two exercise like twins of honor our arms again. No, Palamon. Those hopes are prisoners with us. Here we are. And which is heavy as Palamon? Unmarried. Oh, no figures of ourselves shall we ever see. Tis too true, our sight. All valiant uses in us two here shall perish. Yet, cousin, whilst Palamon is with me, let me perish if I think this our prison. Certainly, tis a main goodness, no, cousin, that our fortunes so were twinned together. Tis most true. Two souls put in two noble bodies. <laughs> let them suffer the gall of hazard so they grow together, will never sink. They must okay. not say they could. Shall we make worthy uses of this place that all men hate so much? How, <laughs> gentle cousin? <laughs> Let's think this prison holy sanctuary oh. to keep us from corruption of worse men. What worthy blessing can be but our imaginations may make it ours. And here, being thus together, we are an endless mind to one another. We are one another's wife, oh. ever begetting new births of love. <laughs> we are father, friends, uh. acquaintance. We are in one another families. I am your heir and you are mine. This place is our inheritance. No hard oppressor dare take this from us. Were we at liberty? A wife might part us lawfully. Uh, or business. Quarrels consume us. I might sicken, cousin, where you would never know it. And so perish without your noble hand to close mine eyes. Or prayers to the gods. A thousand chances were we from hence would sever us. You have made me almost wanton with our captivity. And all those pleasures that woo the wills of men to vanity I see through now. And am sufficient to tell the world, tis but a gaudy shadow! <laughs> Is there any record of two that love better than we do our sight? Sure, there cannot. I do not think it possible our friendship should ever leave us. Till our deaths, it cannot. And after death, our spirits shall be led to those that love eternally. <laughs> Speak on, sir. Huh. Well, this garden has a world of pleasures in it. What flower is that? Oh, it's called Narcissus, madam. Ah, oh, that was a fair boy, certain. But a fool to love himself. Were there not maids enough? Pray forward. Or were they all hard-hearted? I think they could not be to one so fair. Thou wouldst not? I think I should not, madam. That's a good wench. Take heed your kindness, though. Why, good madam? Men are mad things. Will you go forward, cousin? Yes. Hence not thou work such flowers in silk, mistress? Yes. I'll have a gown full of them. And of those. Now that's a pretty color. Will not do rarely upon a skirt. What do you say? Dainty, madam. Cousin. Cousin, how do you, sir? What? Hey, Palma? Never till now I was in prison, Arsite. Why? What's the matter, man? By heaven and earth, she's a goddess! Of all flowers, <laughs> he thinks a rose is best. Why, good madam? Tis the very emblem of a maid. For when the west wind courts her gently, how modestly she blows and paints the sun with her chaste blushes. But when the north comes near her, rude and impatient, well, then, like chastity, she locks her beauties in her butt again and sends him to base briars. Yet, good madam, sometimes her modesty blows so far that she falls for it. A maid, if she have any honor, would be loath to take example by her. <sighs> Thou art wanton. Oh, she is wondrous fair. She is all the beauty extant. The sun is high. Let's run in. Keep that flower. You know, I feel wondrous merry-hearted. I could laugh now. I could lie down for sure and take one with you. That's as we bargain, madam. Agree then. What think you of this beauty? Tis a rare one. Is it but a rare one? Yes. A matchless beauty. Might not a man well lose himself and love her? I cannot tell what you have done. I have. Oh, but shrew mine eyes for it now. I feel my shackles. You 
love her then? Who would not? And desire her before my liberty? I saw her first. That's nothing. But it shall be. I saw her too. Yes, but you shall not love her. I, I will not as you do to worship her. Oh. I will love her as a woman to enjoy her. So both may love. You shall not love at all. Not love at all? Who shall deny me? I that first saw her. I that with mine eyes first took possession of all those beauties in her revealed to mankind. If thou lovest her or entertainst a hope to blast my wishes, thou art a traitor, our sight. Yes, I love her. Oh. And if the lives of all my name lay on it, I must do so. I love her with my soul. If that will lose ye, farewell, Palamon. Oh. I am as worthy and as free a lover as any Palamon or any living that is a man's son. Have I called thee friend? Yes, and have found me so. Let me deal coldly with you. Yeah. And not I part of your blood, part of your soul? You have said that I was Palamon and you were our sight. Yes. Am I not liable to those affections, those joys, griefs, angers, fears my friend shall suffer? You may be. Why, then, do you deal so cunningly, so strangely, so unlike a noble kinsman Whoa. to love alone? Speak truly. Do you think me unworthy of her sight? No, but unjust if thou pursue that sight. Because another first sees the enemy, shall I stand still and let mine honor down and never charge? Yes, if that, if he be but one. But say that one had rather combat me. Then let that one say so and use thy freedom. Else, if thou pursuest her, be as that cursed man that hates his country, insurrectionist. Oh, you are mad. I must be till thou art worthy, our sight. Fie, sir. You play the child extremely. I will love her. I must. I ought to do so, and I dare, and all this justly. Oh, but now, but now, thy false self and thy friend had but this fortune to be one hour at liberty and grasp our swords in our good hands. I would quickly teach thee what were to filch affection from another. Put but thy head out of this window more, and as I have a soul, I'll nail thy life to it. Thou darest not, fool. Thou canst not. Oh? Yet yeah, thou art feeble. Put my head out. I'll throw my body out and leap the garden when I see her next and pitch between her arms to anger thee. No more. Keeper's coming. I shall live to knock thy brains out with my shackles. Do. By your leave, gentlemen. Now, honest keeper. <laughs> Uh, Lord Arsight, you must do the duke presently, the cause I know not yet. I am ready, Keeper. Uh, Prince Palamon, I must a while bereave you of your fair cousin's company. And me too, even when you please of life. Why is he sent for? It may be that he will marry her. He's goodly. <laughs> And like enough, the Duke hath taken notice of both his blood and his body. Oh, but his falsehood! Why should a friend be treacherous? How now, Keeper? Where's our sight? Banished! The Prince Spiritus obtained his liberty, but he must nevermore upon his oath and life set foot evermore in this kingdom. He's a blessed man. He shall see Thebes again. And call to arms the brave young men that when he bid them charge, fall on like fire. He may have a fortune if he dare make himself a worthy lover, yet in the field to strike a battle for her. <laughs> Were I at liberty, I would do things of such virtuous greatness that this lady, this blushing virgin, would take manhood to her and seek to ravish me. <laughs> uh, my lord, for you I have this charge to... Uh... To discharge my life? No, 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 no. Uh, but to remove uh, from this place, your lordship, the windows uh, to open. <laughs> the devils take them that are so envious to me. Pretty kill me. <laughs> yes, and hang for it afterward. No, no, no. By this good light, had I a sword, I would kill thee. Why, my lord? I must not go. Thou shalt stay and see her bright eyes break each morning mm -hmm. against thy window, and let life into thee. Thou shalt feed upon the sweetness of a noble beauty. The worst is death. I will not leave the kingdom. I know mine own is but a heap of ruins and no redress there. If I go, he has her. 
I am resolved another shape shall make me or end my fortunes. Either way, I am happy. I'll see her and be near her or no more. I'll be there, that's for certain. And I'll be there. And I, <laughs> I am sure to have my husband as jealous as a turkey. But that's all right. I'll go anyway. I'll let him mumble. <laughs> okay. okay. We'll see the sport. Then everyone's attacked. Uh, by your leaves, honest friends. Pray you, whither go you? To the game is my friend. Whither? Why would you ask that? Uh, Tis a question to me that knows not. Hmm. We have games, we're going to the games. Uh, Where were you born that you know it not? Not far, sir. Are there such games today? The Duke himself will be in person there. Uh, what pastimes are they? Uh, golfing and wrestling and running. Will you come along with? Uh, not yet, madam. Well, sir, take your own time. My mind misgives me. This fellow has a vengeance trick of the hip. Mark how his body's made for it. <laughs> I'll hang, though, if he do venture, he'll hang. Okay. Ah. Plum porridge. <laughs> he wrestle, he yep. roast eggs. <laughs> Come, let's be gone. <laughs> oh, this is an offered opportunity I durst not wish for. Well, I could have wrestled. The best men called it excellent, and run? <laughs> Swifter the wind upon a field of corn, curling the wealthy ears never flow. I'll venture, and in some poor disguise be there. Who knows whether my brows may not be girt with garlands, and happiness prefer me to a place where I may ever dwell in sight of her. as ever these eyes yet looked on. Next, I pitied him, and so would any young maid of my conscience that ever dreamed or vowed her maidenhead to a young, handsome man. <laughs> and then I loved him, extremely loved him, infinitely loved him. And yet, he had a cousin, fair as he is too, but in my heart was Palamon. And there, oh Lord, what a coil he keeps. To hear him sing of an evening. Oh, what a heaven it is! And yet his songs are sad ones. Oh, fair spoken was never a gentleman. When I come in to bring him water in the morning, first he bows his noble body and then salutes me thus. Fair gentle maid, good morrow. May thy goodness get thee a happy husband. <laughs> I love my lips the better ten days after. What do you want to do so every day? He grieves much, and me as much to see his misery. What should I do to make him know I love him? For I would fain enjoy him. <laughs> Say that I ventured to set him free. What says the law, then? Eh, that's much for law, or kindred. I will do it, and this night, or tomorrow, he will love me! Woo! <laughs> you have done worthily. I have not seen since Hercules a man of tougher sinews. Whatever you are, you are the best at golf thing that these times can behold. I am proud to please you. <laughs> what country bred you, friend? This, but far off, Prince. Are you a gentleman? My father said so. Are you his heir? His youngest, sir. Well, your father sure is a happy sire, then. What proves you? 
a little of all noble qualities. Um, I dare not praise my feet and horsemanship, yet they that knew me would say it was my best piece. Upon my soul, a proper man! She is so. How do you like him, lady? I admire him. I have not seen so young a man so noble, if he say true of his sort. Believe. His mother was a wondrous handsome woman. His face, methinks, goes that way. But his body and fiery mind illustrate a brave father. Mark how his virtue, like a hidden sun, breaks through his baser garments. He's well got, sure. What made you seek this place, sir? Noble Theseus, to purchase name and do my ablest service to such a well-found wonder as thy worth. Well, we are much indebted to your travels, nor shall you lose your wish. Pyrrhus, dispose of this fair gentleman. Thanks, Theseus. Whatever you are, you're mine, and I shall give you to a most noble service to this lady. Thus, let me seal my vowed faith. When your servant, your most unworthy creature, but offends you, command him die he shall. That were too cruel. I'll see you furnished, and since you say you are a horseman, I must needs entreat you this afternoon to ride. But it is a tough course. I like it better than Prince. I shall not then freeze in my saddle. Sweet, you must be ready. And you, Amelia, and you, friend, tomorrow by the sun to do observance. I hope you shall not go afoot. Well, that were a shame, sir, while I have horses. Take your pick. And what you want at any time, let me but know it. If you serve faithfully, I dare assure you'll find a loving mistress. If I do not, let me find that my father ever hated. Disgrace and blows. Come. Lead the way, you have won it. Sister, which through my heart, you have a servant that if I were woman, would be master. But you are wise. Mm, too wise for that, sir. <laughs> Let all the dukes and all the devils roar! Cain's at liberty! I have ventured for him, and out have I brought him to a little wood a mile hence. And there he shall keep close till I provide him files and food, for yet his iron bracelets are not off. <laughs> I love him beyond love and beyond reason or wit or safety. I've made him know it. I care not. I'm desperate. <laughs> sure, he cannot be so unmanly as to leave me here. <laughs> and yet he has not thanked me for what I've done. No, not so much as kissed me. That methinks is not so well. Yet I hope when he considers mm. more, this love of mm. mine will take more root within him. Let him use me how he will. So use me kindly. For use me, so he shall, or I'll proclaim him and to his face, no man. <laughs> Shortly, you may keep yourself. Now, I wonder what's going on the other side of the road here. Woo! She Woo! takes strong note of me, hath made me near her. Alas, alas, poor cousin Palamon. Yes, poor man, prisoner. I is a man stay here thou so little dreamest upon my fortunes that thou thinkst thyself a happier thing to be so near Amelia. Me, thou deemst at Thebes, and there in wretched, although free. <laughs> but if thou knowest my mistress breathed on me, mm -hmm. and that I eared her language, lived in her eye, oh, cause what passion would enclose thee? Traitor kinsman! Oh, thou shouldst perceive my passion were these signs of imprisonment off me. Cousin Palamon! Cousin her art sight. Give me language such as thou hast showed me feet. Your questions with your equal who professes to clear his own way with the mind and sword of a true gentleman. <laughs> that thou durst, Arsite. My cuz. My cuz, you have been well advertised how much I dare. You have seen me use my sword against the advice of fear. Sir, you were called a good knight and a bold, but the whole week's not fair if any day it rain. Their yeah, valiant they temper men lose when subway. they incline to treachery, and then they I mean, fight like couple bears. Take my video. Why were they not tied? Kinsman, you might as well speak this and act it in your glass as to his ear which now disdains you. Come up to me. Quit me of these shackles. 
Give me a sword, though it be rusty, and the charity of one meal lend me. Come before me then, a, a good sword in thy hand, and do but say that Emily is thine. I will forgive the trespass thou hast done against me. Yea, my life, if then thou carry it. And brave souls in shades, which have died manly, which will seek of me some news from the earth, they shall get none but this, that thou art brave and noble. Be content. Again, betake you to your Hawthorne house. With counsel of the night, I will be here with wholesome viands. These impediments will I file off. You shall have garments and <laughs> perfumes to kill the smell of the prison. After, when you shall stretch yourself and say, but our sight I am in plight, there shall be at your choice both sword and armor. Oh, you heavens! Dares any so noble bear a guilty business? None, but only our side. Therefore, none but our side in this kind is so bold. Oh, sweet Palamon. I do embrace you and your offer. For your offer do it I only, sir. Your person, I may not wish more than my sword's edge on it. I'll bring you every needful thing. I pray you, take comfort and be strong. Pray, hold your promise, and do the deed with a bent brow. Tis certain you love me not. Be rough with me and... Pour this oil out of your language. I am a suitor, that to your sword you will bequeath this plea, and talk of it no more. But, but this one word. You are going now to gaze upon my mistress, oh. for no to mind she is. Nay, then. Nay, pray you! You talk of feeding me to breed me strength. You are going now to look upon a sun that strengthens what it looks on. There you have vantage o'er me. But enjoy it, till my, I may enforce my remedy. Farewell. <laughs> he has mistook the break I meant. He's gone after his fancy. Tis well nigh morning. No matter. Would it were perpetual night and darkness, Lord of the world! Hark, tis a word! In me hath grief slain fear. And but for one thing I care for nothing, and that's Palamon. I have heard strange howls this live long night. Why may it not be they have made prey of him? He has no weapons. He cannot run. I'll set it down. He's torn to pieces. They howled many together, and then they fed on him. So much for that. Be bold to ring the bell. Ah, how stand I then? All scared when he is gone. No, no, I lie. My father's to be hanged for his escape. Myself to beg if I prize life so much as to deny the act. But that I would not do where I tried death by dozens. Oh, alas, I am moped. Food took I none these two days. Sipped some water. I have not closed mine eyes save when my lids scoured off their brine. Ugh, dissolve my life! Let not my sense unsettle lest I should drown or stab or hang myself. The best way is the next way to a grave. The point is this. An end, and that is all. I should be near the place. Oh, Cousin Palamon, our sight, the same. I've brought you food and files. Come forth and fear not. Here's no Theseus. Yeah, nor none so honest, our sight. That's no matter. We'll argue that hereafter. Come, take courage. Here, sir, drink. Our sight, thou mightst now poison me. I might. But I must fear you first. To your health. Do. <laughs> Sit down then. And let me entreat you. By all the honesty and honor in you, no mention of this woman. To disturb us, we shall have time enough. Well, sir, I'll pledge you. <laughs> Drink a good hearty draft. It breeds good blood, man. 
Do you not feel it thaw you? Stay, I'll tell you after a draft or two more. <laughs> Here, Arcite. To the ladies we have known in our days. <laughs> the Lord Steward's daughter, you remember her? <laughs> after you, cuz. Uh. She loved a sharp-dressed man. Mm, she did, sir, well. And I have heard some call him Arsite, mm. and... <laughs> Out with it, Faith. <laughs> this one... Mm. There was a time when young men went a-hunting, and a wood, and a broad beach, and thereby hangs a tale. Hi, ho! Upon my life, for Emily! Should I say for the whole thing or no? Fly away with this strained murder! I don't have an extra I say again, that this. sigh was breathed for Emily. Face, cousin, darest thou break first? You are wide! By heaven and earth, there's nothing in the honest. Then I'll leave you. You are a beast now. As thou makest me traitor! There's all things needful, files and shirts and perfumes. Huh. I'll come again some two hours hence and bring that that shall quiet all. A sword and armor? Fear me not. You are now too foul. Farewell. Was Get it? off your trinkets, you shall want not. Oh, Sir, I'll hear no more. Another camera, buy another camera. If you keep touch, he oh, dies. Oh, camera on it. I can pause it, I can pause it, uh, I can pause it in between. Very cold. And all the stars are out too. Little stars and all that look like aglets. Let me take my video. The sun so. has seen my folly. Palamon! Alas, no, he's in heaven. Where am I now? Sir. Methinks, Arcite, this armor's very like that thou wore'st the day the three kings fell. <laughs> but lighter. That was a very good one. And that day, I well remember, you outdid me, cousin. I never saw such valor. When you charged upon the left wing of the enemy, I spurred hard to come up. And under me, I had a right good horse. Oh, thou hadst indeed a bright bay, I remember. Yes. Oh. But all was vainly labored in me. You outwent me. Nor could my wishes reach you. Yet, a little I did by imitation. Ah, uh, more by virtue, cousin. You are modest. Stay a little. Is not this piece too straight? No, no. Tis well. I'll have nothing harm thee but my sword. A bruise would be dishonor. Now I am perfect. Stand off then. Is there aught else to say? This only and no more. You are my aunt's son. And the blood we desire to shed is mutual. In me thine and in thee mine. My sword is in my hand. And if you kill me, the gods and I forgive me. If there be a place prepared for those that sleep in honor, I wish his weary soul that falls may win it. By bravely, cousin. Give me your noble hand. Here, Palamon. This hand shall never more come near thee with such friendship. I commend thee. If I fall, curse me, and say I was a coward, for none but such dare die in these just trials. Once more, farewell, my cousin. Farewell, Arsite. has undone us. Why? This is the Duke. Oh. A golfing, as I told you. Uh, ah. uh, uh, oh, retire for honor's sake and safety presently into your bush again. If you be seen, you perish is that for great reason. And, and I you reveal me for my content. No, no, I will be no more hidden. You'll put off this great adventure to a second trial. What if uh, on uh, you are not mad? I love Amelia! What if it was and I'll bury thee! And all cross is else! What if it was karate? <laughs> what? what if it was Ignorant and mad malicious traitors are you what if that it was against ninja? the tenor of my law are making battle thus like knights appointed without my leave and officers of arms by cast of both shall die! Hold thy word, Theseus! 
We are certainly both traitors. By all our friendship, sir. By all our dangers, by all you love most. By your own eyes. By that strength with which you swore I went above all women, almost all men, and yet I yielded, Theseus. To crown all this to your most noble soul, which cannot want to mercy, I beg first for mercy. Mercy. Mercy on these princes. You make my face real. And say I felt compassion to them both. How would you place it? Upon their lives, but with their banishment. If you desire their lives, invent a way safer than banishment. Can these two live and have the agony of love about them every day they fight about you? Hourly bring your honor into public question with their swords. Be wise and here forget them. It concerns your credit and my oath equally. I have said they die. Better they fall by the law than one another. Bow not mine honor. Most royal brother, that oath was rashly made and in your anger. Shall anything that loves me perish for me? That were a cruel wisdom. Duke Theseus, the goodly mothers that have groaned for these, all the longing maids that ever loved, if your vows stand, shall curse me in my beauty till I am nothing but the scorn of women. For heaven's sake, save their lives and banish them! On what conditions? Swear them to never more make me their contention, to know me, to tread upon thy dukedom and to be, wherever they shall travel, ever strangers to one another. I'll be torn to pieces before I take this oath. <sighs> Forget I love her? Oh, all ye gods despise me then! By banishment I not mislike, that we may carry our swords and cause a law. Else never trifle, but take our lives, Duke. Will you our side take these conditions? He's a villain then! Ah, what men are these? No, never, Duke. Tis worse to me than begging to take my life so basely. Though I think I never shall enjoy her, yet I'll die for her. Oh. What shall be done for now? I do feel compassion. Let it not fall again, sir. Say, Amelia, if one of them were dead, as one must be, are you content to take the other to your husband? They cannot both enjoy you. Look upon them. They are princes. And if you can love, end this difference. I give consent. Will you consent, princess? With all our souls. He that she refuses must die then. Any, Any death, death thou canst invent, Duke. If I fall from that mouth, I fall with favor. And lovers yet unborn shall bless my ashes. If she refuse me, yet my grave will wed me. And soldiers sing my epitaph. Make choice then. I cannot. <laughs> They are both too excellent for me. A hair shall never fall of these men. Well, what shall become of them? Thus I ordain it, and once again it stands on by mine honor. They both shall die. You shall go to your country and back within this month. And whether by fair and knightly combat wins her hand, he shall enjoy her. The other lose his head. Will this content you? Yes. Here, our sight. I am friends again till that hour. I embrace ye. Come, shake hands then. And take heed. As you are gentlemen, this quarrel sleep until the hour prefixed and hold your course. We're going over there, ma'am. We dare not fail thee, Theseus. Now I shall give you useless to princes and to friends. And when he returns, who wins, I'll settle here. Who loses, but I'll weave upon his beard.
never bring good news. Uh, <laughs> Sir, where's your daughter? Why do you ask? When did you see her? This morning. Uh, was she well? Was she help? When did she sleep? These are strange questions. Uh, well, I think she was not very well now that you make me mind her. But for this very day, I asked her questions. And she answered me so far from what she was. Uh, so, so, so childishly, sillily, as if she was a, a fool and innocent. Oh, I was very angry. But what of uh, What do you like? What? What of her? Nothing but my pity, but you must know it. And as good by me as by another man who less love her. Well, sir? Not well. Not well? Tis to I... I think she's mad. Oh, it cannot be! Well, believe me, you'll find it so. Oh, I have suspected what you have told me. Oh. Here we are. And I will always For you, love you. Not well. One. I can sing 20 more. I think you can. Truly can I. I can sing um, Celine Dion, Lady Gaga. Oh, hey, are not you a tailor? Yeah, but what yeah. about Anya? Well, where's my wedding gown? I'll bring it tomorrow. Do very rarely, for I must lose my maiden head by mm. candlelight. Oh. It will never thrive else. You must even take that patiently. <laughs> oh, it is true. Oh, good evening, good men. Pray. Did you ever hear of one young Palamon? Yes, girl, we know him. <laughs> is not a fine young gentleman. He is love. <laughs> well, I guess you, and you must not ever cross her or she will be distempered far, far worse than thou she shows. Yes, he is a fine man. And the 930. Oh, is he so? Whoa. You have a sister? Yes. Say for the whole thing or well, no? She shall never have him till her so, for if she so sees we'll him once, she is gone. She What's is done, and undone in an hour. All What's the fair maids of our town are in love with him, right, but so I laugh at them <laughs> and let them alone. It's not a wise course. Yes. There is at least 200 now with child by him. Ooh. There must be four. Yet I keep close for all this. This is strange. Oh, as ever you heard, mm. but say nothing. Mm. No. They come from all parts of the dukedom to him. I'll warrant you, he had not so few last night as twenty to dispatch. He'll tickle it up in two hours if his hand be in it. <laughs> oh, she is lost. Test all cure. Heaven forbid, man. Hey, come hither. You're a wise man. Does she know him? Now what she did. You're master of a ship? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, hey, where's your compass? Um, uh, 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 here. here. Ah, uh, set it to the north. And now direct your course to the wood where Palamon lies longing for me. And for the tackling, you let me alone. Come, weigh me, Herbie's cheerily. Uh, <laughs> oh, tis up. The wind is fair. Time for booting out of the mansell. Where's your Let's get her in! Up to the top, boy! Where's the pilot? Here! Oh, what comes down? A fair one! Fair for its masters! Talk about! What would you do with a drunken sailor? What would you do with a drunken sailor? What would you do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning! What? Woo! has this young prince. Palamon is but his foil. To him a mere dull shadow, no stirring in him, no alacrity. And yet, these that we count errors may become him. Narcissus was a sad boy, but a heavenly. Oh, I am sodded, utterly lost. My virgin's faith has fled me, for even now, had my brother asked whether I love, I had run mad for 
our sight. Ask now my sister, more for Palamon. Stand both together, come ask me, brother. Alas, I know not. Ask me now, sweet sister, I may go run! <sighs> What a mere child is fancy that having two fair gents of equal sweetness cannot choose but must cry for both. Come, bring him in quickly now by any means I long to see him. Oh, sister, you're too close. Oh. Any better on my conscience was never a soldier's friend. That's what I described him. <laughs> Get a great deal short. Methinks of him that's first with Palamon. Oh, pray speak him, friend. I guess he is a prince too. And if that may be, greater. For his show has all the ornament of honor in it. When he speaks, his tongue is like a trumpet. All his liniments are as a man would wish him, strong and clean. They are both the sons of honor. Or by my soul, I long to see him. Lady. You shall see men fight now. I wish it, but not the cause, my lord. Cause pity love should be so tyrannous. Oh, my weak-hearted sister, what think you? Must these men die too? Weep not until they weep blood, lady, it must be. You have steeled them with your beauty. Come, honored friend. To you I give the field. Pray, order it fitting the persons that must use it. Yes, sir. I'll go and visit them. Good friend, be royal. It will want no bravery. Poor lady, go weep. For whosoever wins loses a noble cousin for thy sins. Her distraction is born sometimes at the noon and at other time, is it not? Oh, uh, she is continually in a harmless distemper. Uh. Uh, she sleeps little altogether without appetite, uh, save often drinking and uh, dreaming of another world and a better, and what broken piece of matter, so ere she's about, the name of Palamon lords it, that she, that she forces every business with or fixes it to every question. Look, 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 here she comes, you shall perceive her behavior. Mm -hmm. I forgot it quite. The burden on it was And a pet by no worse man than Geraldo, Amelia's schoolmaster. He's as fantastical a fellow as ever he may go upon his legs. For in the next world will Dido see Palamon, and then will she be out of love with Aeneas. What stuff's here, poor soul? Even us all day long. Now for this charm that I told you of. You must put a piece of silver on the tip of your tongue. Ah, or no fairy. And then if it be your place to come where the blessed spirits are. Oh, as there's a sight now. We maids that have our livers perished, cracked to pieces with love. We shall come there. And then will I make Palamon a nosegay? And then let him mark me. And then... Uh, How prettily she's a myth. Note her a little further. Oh, alas. Tis a shrewd life they have in the other place. Such burning, frying, boiling, hissing, howling, chattering, cursing, woo! Tis shrewd measure, take heed. If one be mad, or hang, or drown themselves, thither they go, Jupiter bless us. And then shall we be put in a cauldron of lead, among a whole million of cup purses, and then boil like a gammon of bacon. How her brain coins. Now lords and courtiers that have got made with child bear in this place, and they shall stand in fire up to the navel, and in ice up to the heart. And there the offending part burns, and the deceiving part praises. It's a very grievous punishment, as one should think, for such a trifle. She continues this fancy. Tis not an engraft madness, but a most thick and profound melancholy. I'm the heiress, and then she howls. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> What think you of her? I think she hath a perturbed mind and I cannot minister to her. <laughs> Alas! What then? Wait! Understand you she ever affected any 
man ere she beheld Palamon. Well, I, 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 yeah, I, I once had hoped that she had fixed her liking to this gentleman here, my friend. I did think so too, and, and would account, I had a great plan of fun to give half my state for both she and I at this present share, student faintly on the same terms. That intemperate surfeit of her eye hath distempered the other senses. They may return and settle again to execute their preordained faculties, but they are now in a most extravagant vagary. <laughs> this you must do. Confine her to a place wherein the light may rather seem to steal and then be permitted. Take upon you, young sir, her friend, the name of Palamon. Say you come to eat with her and to commune of love. This will catch her attention, for this her mind beats upon. Sing to her such a you never know with these things. They get a little out of hand. Oh, here he comes. Did this advice I tell you do any good upon her? Very well. That's, Woo! that's good. The maid that kept her company has half persuaded her, but I... Um, Palamon. <laughs> Within the half an hour, she came smiling to me and, and she asked me what I would eat. And when I would kiss her, I asked her presently and I kissed her twice. <laughs> Twas very well done. Twenty times had been far better, for there the cure lies mainly. Uh, sh she would have missed it. You did so? No, 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 no. Twas very ill done then. <laughs> You should observe her every way. I have no voice to confirm her that way. That's all one if you make a noise. If she entreat again, do anything. Fly with her if she asks. Oh, oh, doctor! Yes, in the way of cure! Oh, now by your leave, in the way first of honesty. That's but a niceness. Ne'er give your child away for honesty. Cure her first this way, then if she will be honest, she has the power. Thank you, doctor. Pray bring her in. Let's see how she is. I will, and I will tell her her Palamon stays for her. But, doctor, I think you are in the wrong still. <laughs> you fathers are fine fools. Her honesty. We should give her physic till we find that. But why do you think she's not honest? How old is she? Eighteen. She may be. No, she may be. She may be. She may be. But that's all one. It's nothing to our purpose. Now, whatever her father says, if you perceive her mood inclining that way I spoke of, Vitalisa, way of the flesh, you have me. Whoa. Right. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Please her appetite and do it home. It cures her. It's so fast. So the melancholy illness that infects her. I'm off your mind, doctor. Pray, bring her in. Ooh. See that you are. Now she's coming. She's coming. Humor her. <laughs> Come, girl. Your love Palamon stays for you and has done ever this long hour to visit. Whoa, Flossie. <laughs> I thank him for his gentry, dear. Will you go with me? What shall we do there, oh. baby? <laughs> Why, play at stool ball. What else is there to do? <laughs> I'm content. <gasps> if we keep our wedding there. Oh, tis true. Oh. For we shall find some blind priest for the purpose. <laughs> Besides, my father must be hanged tomorrow, and that will put a blot on the business. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you not Palamon? <laughs> <laughs> do, do you not know me? <clears throat> hey, baby. Yeah, but you care not for me. I have nothing but this poor petticoat and two coarse smocks. That's all one. I will have you. <gasps> will you assure me? Oh, by this fair hand, I will. We'll to bed, then. <sighs> 
even when you will. Oh, no! Why do you rub my kiss off? Tis a sweet one and will perfume me finely against the wedding. Hey, is not this your cousin Arsight? Yeah. Yes, sweetheart, and I am so glad my cousin Palamon hath made so fair a choice. Well, do you think he'll have me? Yes, without doubt. Do you think so, too? Yes. We'll have many children. What you do here? You miss the noblest sight that ever was seen. Are they in the field? They are, and you're charged to be there too. Uh, I will be with you straight. Uh, I must e'en leave you here. Hey, 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 hey. We'll go with you. I'm not in the fight. What think you of her? I warrant you, within these three or four days, I'll make her right again. Come. Uh, you must not from her, but preserve her in this way. I will. Let's get her in. Come on, sweetie. Let's go to dinner and play some cards. Oh, and shall we kiss too? A hundred times. And twenty? And twenty. And then we'll sleep together! Take her off her! And, 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 and marry we will. And you'll not hurt me. I will not. If you do love, I'll cry. I will no step further. Will you lose this sight? I had rather see a wren hop at a fly than watch this decision. Every blow that falls threats a brave life. Each stroke laments the place where it falls. I will stay here. It is enough my hearing shall be punished with what shall happen. Sir, my good lord, your sister will know further. What? She must. She shall see deeds of honor nature now shall make the act the story that for the whole thing. sealed with eyes and ears. You must be there. Pardon you me, are no, I'm good. the victors. Where are you going? Meet the price. Bye, Mom. The, the, the garland to crown the Christian's title. If I were there, I'd wink. This draw is, as it were, is a dark and you the only star to shine. I am extinct. There has been envy in that light that shows the one the other. You must rise toward my seat. It is much better I am not there. Better never born than to minister such harm. What is the chance? The cry is a Palamon. Alas, he is one. Twas ever likely. I prithee run, tell me how it goes. Still Palamon! Run and inquire! Poor servant, thou hast lost. Where our sister is, in expectation yet quaking and unsettled. Fair Emily. The gods, by their divine arbitrament, have given you our sight. For the subdued, give them here our present justice, for I know their lives but pension. Let us here be done. Hippolyta, mm. when I of yours conceives a tear that which it will deliver. Is this winning? Oh, oh, you heavenly powers, where is your mercy? But that your wills have said it must be so and charge me to comfort this unfriended, this miserable prince who cuts away a life more worthy of him than all the women. I should and would die too. Infinite pity that four such eyes should be so fixed on one that two must needs be blind for it. So it is. My, my friend, my friend, your gentle daughter gave me freedom once. You'll see it done now forever. Pray, how does she? I heard she was not well. She is restored, sir, and uh, to be married shortly. By my short life, I am most glad on it. Tis the latest thing I shall be glad on. Prithee, tell her so. Uh, commend me to her, and to peace her portion, uh, tender her this. The gods requite you, and make her ever thankful. Adieu. Now let my life be as short as my leave taken. Hold! 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 Oh! Oh! It is a curse and haste you men if it is done so quickly! Noble Palamon, the gods will show their glory in a life that thou art yet to lead. Can that be? 
Arise, great sir, and give these tidings here that are most dearly sweet and bitter. What has waked us from our dream? List then, your cousin, mounted upon a steed that Emily did first bestow on him, and on that horse was our sight, tripping the stones of Athens. And as he went, we going out? the hot horse, hot as fire, fell to what disorder his power could give his will. Bounds, stands on end. For Receive you her. You him. Emily, by you, I have lost what's dearest to me, save what is bought. And yet, I purchase cheaply, as I do rape your value. Oh, miserable end of our alliance. The gods are mighty, our sight. If thy heart, if thy worthy manly heart be yet unbroken, give me thy last words. I am Palamon, one that yet loves thee done. Take Emilia, and with her all the world's joy. Here, reach thy hand. Farewell. I have told my last hour. I was false, but never treacherous. Oh. Forgive me, cousin. One kiss from fair Emilia. Oh, oh, oh. Tis done. Take her. I die. Thy brave soul seek a reason. I'll close thine eyes, Prince. Blessed souls be with thee. or two, a uh, fairly brief evening for us, so you won't mind another minute or two. Um, we are the Drilling Company. Yeah. We are very grateful to be at the forefront of theater coming back to New York City. We are also purveyors of Shakespeare in the parking lot downtown on the Lower East Side. And if you enjoy tonight's performance, we're doing it tomorrow and we're doing it Wednesday, then we're taking a week off and we're going back to the Lower East Side, so bring your friends down there and check out what that environment is like, 117 Norfolk Street, uh, the 28th, 9th, and 30th at 7 p.m., also free. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of free, I have to tell you that Shakespeare in the Parking Lot has been part of New York City for over 20 years. It has always been, and as long as we're in charge of it, will always be free, free Shakespeare for the people of New York. Yeah. And yet, and yet, if I may borrow from our own American bard, we do rely upon the kindest of strangers. <laughs> so, um, we do have a uh, internet presence because we are the new millennium and so if you have it in your hearts and only in these post-covid financial hellhole times if you have it in your wallet and really don't stress if you don't if you have it in your wallet go to our website drillingcompany.org throw a cyber ducket into our cyber bucket and you will not leave Shakespeare to chance or fate of the gods you will help keep it alive for years to come thank you and good night